So we've talked about whole numbers. Um, the next step is to get into a little bit outside the whole numbers, which is something like this. Eight plus a negative three. So we need to define what that, now your, your book will actually probably usually list it like this. The parentheses around it like that means that's a negative three and not subtracting three. So anyway, let's define what it means to be a negative number. And to do that, we go back to our number line again. Pretend these are evenly spaced. When it comes to doing any sort of artwork, I leave a lot to be desired. Reason I'm a math teacher, not an art teacher. So anyway, pretend that's not a terribly ugly number line. There's a, there's a couple of different ways to express the value, the amount, or count of 8 or whatever. We're ignoring the names for right now. For example, that count of 8, I could put a dot at 8. That would represent 8. But that's just a dot. It's, not a, it's, it's just a representation. It's not a working representation. The most useful representation is something called a vector. And all a vector is is a fancy word for an arrow that starts at 0 and goes to 8. So it does two things. Its length is 8 units long. It tells me that the, the number is a size of 8. And the arrow pointing this way tells me it's a positive 8. So if I had it looking like this, it should be the same length, but the arrows on the other end tells me it's negative. Make sense? So now let's combine that, or let's define that process of combining values, combining counts with addition. If I had 8 plus a positive 3, The way that would be defined is first I define the, the vectors. 8, again, looks like that. 3 looks something like that. Addition, the process of addition is taking those vectors, those arrows, and putting them together. Now, we all knew before I even said anything, before I showed you this, that 8 plus 3 is 11. And this diagram shows that. you got the length of 8 plus 3 more you end up at 11. So now how does this picture change if the problem isn't 8 plus 3, but 8 plus a negative 3? Well, this same value here of 3 is the same length, but it goes the opposite direction. So when I go to combine those, Instead of combining and going in the same direction and building the value, they work against each other. And we end up at 5. Does that make sense? So when we are dealing with negatives or integers, which can be positive or negative, the number line shows us how to combine the values. Now, I don't expect you to draw out a number line every time you add integers. But I keep, that, I keep that picture in my head when I do that because it tells me how to do it. Let's say I have 12 plus a negative 19. So what I'm thinking in my head, here's 0. Positive 12 goes this way, right? Negative 19, does it go the same direction or the opposite direction? Opposite direction, longer or shorter? Longer, so it goes past the zero. So this tells me two things. One, my answer over here is on the negative side of zero. My answer is negative. The second thing it tells me is my values do not build up. They work against each other. So this length here, which is my result, is the difference between the values. How do we find the difference between 12 and 19? Now notice I didn't subtract them in the order they appeared. I subtracted them biggest minus littlest, right? 19 minus 12 is 7. 
that result is a negative 7. So it's telling me that I'm taking the values, that's actually sometimes called the absolute value. In other words, the length of the vectors here are 12 and 19. That means we're ignoring the direction. The absolute values are 12 and 19. We're going to subtract them because one's positive and one's negative. And then the result is negative because we end up on the negative side of 0. So I might have a negative 42 plus 19. So again, I start at 0. Negative 42 goes this way. Positive 19 goes the other way, but it's shorter. So here we're still ending up on the negative side, and the result is the difference between 42 and 19. 42 minus 19 is 23. So we get a negative 23. So notice, even though we're adding, sometimes mechanically we're subtracting to get the answer. I might have negative 17 plus a negative 25. So here I start out at 0, negative 17 goes this way, negative 25 goes the same direction. So that means my answer is negative, but I am, they're going the same direction, so I am just going to combine the values. 17 and 25 make 42. Does that make sense? Again, I know it's, I mean, you can see here, I actually sketched them out. That helps me see with those negatives. What am I doing? Is my answer positive or negative? Okay, once I know that, am I adding the values or am I subtracting the values? So what if it actually is subtraction instead of addition? Let's do 8 minus 3. Let's figure out how we would represent that on the number line. Well, most of you would probably not argue that it would look like this. Or not argue with it looking like that. 8 minus 3, we end up at 5. Makes sense, right? But if you look at this picture, you realize it looks an awful lot like the picture for 8 plus a negative 3. In fact, it's the same picture. Because... Oops, These are the same problem. I told you before that subtraction is the reverse of addition. Subtraction is just a byproduct of addition. When I have 8 minus 3, the subtraction works with the 3. The operation always works with the number that comes after it. The first number is a starting point. We're starting with the 8, and then we're doing something with that. We're subtracting the 3 is what we're doing to it. But what that means, to subtract 3, the subtraction symbol really means add the opposite. Now, in this case, since the 3 follows, it means we're adding the opposite of 3. So this is really 8 plus, what's the opposite of 3? Negative 3. So subtraction problems are really just a short way of writing addition problems. If I have 42 minus 17, that's really 42 plus a negative 17. Now when both numbers are positive like this, there's no reason to rewrite it like this because we know how to subtract. 42 minus 17, you can subtract it out and get 25. That's a lot simpler than, than this. 42 plus a negative 17. Changing this, doing this conversion is more beneficial if one of them is already negative. For example, let's say we have a negative 19 minus 8. I would change it. Do I change the negative 19? Say no. No, we don't. Remember, it's the number that comes after the operation that it acts on. So minus 8 is really plus a negative 8. Why does it help to change it to addition? Oh, well, we're back to our picture. Here's 0, negative 19, negative 8. They go the same direction, don't they? 
Are we on the positive or the negative side? Negative side. Do we add them or subtract them? Add them. 19 plus 8 is 27. So by changing subtraction into addition, it allows us to use our vectors. This is one that always confuses people. 27 minus a negative 11. That's going to be 27, right? Now the subtraction is working with the negative 11. We're going to add. What's the opposite of negative 11? Positive 11. So just 27 plus 11 or 38. Negative 53 minus a negative 12. What's that going to change to? Well, the negative 53 stays negative, but it's going to be plus 12. Subtracting a negative, the op adding the opposite of negative 12 is adding positive 12. So now it's negative 53 plus 12. We're on the negative side of things, but they cancel, they subtract, don't they? 53 minus 12 is 41. That's going to take some time to get used to. One of the biggest hurdles in any sort of algebra is getting used to working with negatives. Though we'll come back over and over again over the next seven and a half weeks, you'll hopefully get better with them every time they come around. Go back to this basics every time if you have to. Next, multiplication. How do we multiply? Well, we said earlier that when you do first learn how to multiply, 5 times 3 is repeated addition. 5 plus 5 plus 5 gives you 15. Well, with that in mind, negative 5 times 3 shouldn't be too hard. That's just taking negative 5 and adding it 3 times, right? Should add up to negative 15. Not so bad, right? A little bit trickier. What if it's a 5 times a negative 3? Now, another way of writing it, by the way, the book will often write it without even putting the times in there. It'll just be 5 and negative 3 in parentheses. That means multiplication, if there's no symbol. I can't take 5 and add it negative 3 times. So what I have to do is this. I'm just going to switch the order. Negative 3 times 5 means I'm taking negative 3 and I'm adding it 5 times. Which, of course, is still negative 15. The one example that just doesn't work no matter how we look at it is this. Negative 5 times negative 3. Now, they've all been taught that that has to, is supposed to be what? Negative times a negative is a positive. Positive 15 is what you've been taught that answer should be. Why? Well, if the fourth or fifth grade teacher said so, right? There is actually a good reason. There is no way that you can take negative 5 and add it negative 3 times. And even if you sit around, you can't take negative 3 and add it negative 5 times. The definition of multiplication doesn't work here. And in math, we run into this a lot where our basic definition doesn't work. So what we do is we look for a, a pattern. And we define the answer to be what fits the pattern. And throughout the summer here, we're going to find a few examples of this where the definition doesn't work. So we're going to do this. What's negative 5 times 4? Negative 20, right? Negative 5 times 3, negative 15. Negative 5 times 2, negative 10. Negative 5 times 1, negative 5. Now if we look for a pattern, if we're starting with negative 5 every time, if we take this number here that we're multiplying by, if we reduce it by 1 each time, so I subtracted 1 each time, right? My answer actually goes up by 5. Negative 20 up to negative 15. Negative 15 up to negative 10. Negative 10 up to negative 5. Make sense? So, if I reduce this again from 1 down to 0, 
This goes up by 5 to 0. The pattern fits. So if I keep going, negative 5 times negative 1, I have to go up by 5 again. This would be a positive 5. Negative 5 times, I reduce that to a negative 2. This has to go up by 5. Positive 10. Negative 5 times negative 3 goes up by 5. Positive 15. A negative times a negative equals a positive for one reason only. It fits our pattern. It makes our pattern work. A lot of teachers will tell you, well, it just does. You know, That's kind of the reason. It just does. It, it, it fits the pattern, so that's what we're going to make the answer be so that it makes our patterns fit. So when we are multiplying numbers, if I have a positive times a negative, the answer is going to be negative. And 7 times 3 is 21, so it's a negative 21. Notice the multiplication itself is no different. All we have to do is decide whether the answer is positive or negative. If I have a negative times a positive, the answer is a negative, and 6 times 4 is 24. If I have a negative times another negative, the answer is positive, and 8 times 2 is 16. Now I'm not going to go through the pattern because we're running a little short of time, but division follows the same pattern. If I have a positive divided by a negative, what do I get? A negative. Just like a positive times a negative is negative, positive divided by a negative is negative. And the 18 divided by 3 is 6. Now, I'll give you a little hint. I won't go through the full pattern, but the pattern here, remember, division is the reverse of multiplication. For a division problem to be true, this times this has to equal that. Negative 6 times negative 3 is a positive 18. So that's the pattern that works there. If I have a negative divided by a positive, my answer is negative. Negative divided by positive is negative. 28 times, divided by 7 is 4. Basically, if I have one positive and one negative, if I'm multiplying or dividing, the answer is negative. If they're both negative, like this, negative 36 divided by negative 9, then it's a positive. I hesitate. A lot of people say, well, one of each makes a negative and two negatives make a positive. Be careful. That's only with multiplication and division. When you add or subtract, that's not necessarily true. When we add or subtract, you got to do the vectors. Yep. And a lot of people struggle. The big one is subtraction. When you start subtracting with negatives, people, it, it's tough. It's difficult. So be patient with yourself. You're not the only one that's struggling, I guarantee it. Okay. So that's our integers, and they're going to come up as we go through this. Our Next step is to look at what happens when we have something like this, where there's more than one operation to do. Well, some people might look at this and say, well, I read left to right. I'm just going to do it left to right. Three plus eight is 11. Three plus eight is 11. Then I'll do the 11 times 7 is 77. 77 minus 4 is 73. That makes perfect sense, but it's not right. So how do we know how to do it right? There you go. In math, when people two people do a problem, we like to have them get the same answer. So for something like this, we've defined a process called the order of operations. Now, a lot of people think of the order of operations as steps. That's not really true. What they are is levels of priority. It 
tells you what things take priority, what things should happen first, but it doesn't necessarily go step by step. If this condition exists, this is what would happen first, or if this condition exists, this is what would happen first, is really how it works. The highest level or the top level of priority is something called enclosing symbols. Most of you have learned this as parentheses. If you did the please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, that would be the P's, the parentheses. But there are other enclosing symbols. The next or the second level of priority is something called exponents. Exponents include two things, powers and roots, like a square root or whatever. Third level of priority is multiplication and, of course, division, since they're really the same operation. And the final level, the lowest priority is to add or subtract. So back to my original problem over here. Do we have any enclosing symbols? No. no. Do we have any exponents? No. 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 Multiplication or division? No. Yes. So 8 times 7, we're going to combine those two, two numbers with multiplication to get 56. The rest of the problem does not change. Now, all that's left is addition and subtraction, and those are on the same level. If we have more than one thing on the same level, we work left to right, just like reading a book. So we would do the 3 plus 56 first is 59. And then the minus 4 to get 55. Now we're going to look at a problem maybe slightly more difficult than that. There, just a little bit more difficult. Oh, not really. This looks like a monster, but it really isn't that bad. We got to go step by step. Our level of priority by level of priority. First level of priority is enclosing symbols. Well, we have two different sets of parentheses here. How do we know which one to do first? Left to right. This is the first one we come into, left to right. So we got to find its other end which is just right there. So that means we're going to start by working inside that blue box. First thing that's going to happen inside that blue box, well, back to our levels of priority. Any other enclosing symbols? No. no. Exponents. No. Yes, right here. So 2 squared is 2 times 2 is 4. Nothing else changes. Now I'm still working inside that parentheses. Now in order to save time and space on my, on my sheet here, I'm going to take some shortcuts. Now I realize if you're trying to keep up taking notes here, you have to recopy this. Um, just because we're running out of time, I'm going to ask that maybe you have to go back and take that out of the recording if you need to. But what I'm going to do is this. Still working inside this parentheses, what's my next step? Any other exponents? No. So multiplication and division, we have several of them. We're going to go left to right. So 12 divided by 3 is 4. Right? Then we have 4 times 2, 8. So notice, some people wanted to multiply first. 3 times 2 is 6, and 12 divided by 6 would be 2. That would be, we'd be off on that. Next, we go down here. 18 divided by 6 is 3. Um, next one is 16 divided by 4. It's 4. 
So now we've done all the multiplication and division inside that parentheses, inside that closing symbol. So we're down to addition and subtraction. Well, we have 8 plus 4 is 12. 12 minus 3 is 9. 9 plus 4 is 13. So now we've reduced what's inside that set of parentheses to a single number. And whenever we re we've reduced what's in an enclosing symbol to a sim single number, we don't need that enclosing symbol anymore. Did I forget the three? Or? Oh, thank you. There we go. Thank you. So I got my three in there. So I can drop the parentheses. Now when I drop the parentheses, I don't have to do anything except to be aware of something called hidden operations. Whenever there's a number next to a parentheses, that means multiplication. Perfect. So that's really 3 times 13. So now that I've finished that parentheses, I go back through my levels of priority again. What's that? I just, no extra charge for the extra one. Sorry about that. Um, it's at that point in the day where my mind starts to skip too, so sorry. So now we have another enclosing symbol, this other parentheses. That's what we have to do first. 5 minus 3 is 2. Now that's down to a single number, so I don't need the parentheses anymore. So I'm going to take it out. Remembering to put in the multiplication. Now there's no more enclosing symbols. No exponents, so it's multiplication and division. 3 times 13 is 39. And then I have the 3 times 2 is 6. And now it's down to just addition, so I'm going left to right. 8 plus 39 is 47, minus 6, 48. I know I went through that kind of fast, but I got long-winded in the first part of class, apparently. So. Okay, next step. Again, that looked kind of complex, but it's not that bad if you just go through the levels. What if it, now I'll tell you, the one mistake that most people will make on this, avoid it at all costs, they'll use, oh, 8 plus 3 is 11. I'll do that right away. You're, you're done before you even start it. Remember, every digit has an operation in front of it and behind it. When we're looking at this, that 3 right there is added, but it's also multiplied. That multiplication has to happen. The multiplication takes priority over the addition. Okay. So, you might have 5. Looking at this, enclosing symbols, yes. How do we know what to do first? Still left to right. I know you want to say the inside one, but we'll get to that. Hang on. Left to right, we hit this one first. Where's its other end? Well, that one points the wrong way. This one goes back to there. We've got to go all the way down to here. But inside that parentheses, inside that blue box now, the order of operations still applies. Are there any other enclosing symbols? Yeah. Another set of parentheses. So we've got to move inside that red box. Now we've got to start in there. Any other enclosing symbols? No. Exponents. Yes, 2 squared, which is 4. So we replace the 2 squared with a 4. Nothing else changed. Now we still have 7 minus 4, which is 3. And now we've reduced everything inside that set of parentheses to a single number, so we can get rid of it. I put in the multiplication in front because there was a number there. And now, back out to that larger set of parentheses. Any enclosing symbols? No. Nope. Exponents? Multiplication or division? Yeah. 3 times 3 is 9. Down to addition and subtraction. Left to right, nine mi or 14 minus 9 is 5. Plus 1 is 6. 
I've reduced that parentheses to a single number, so I get rid of the parentheses. You're right. Okay. Thank you. It is definitely two hours and 40 minutes takes a lot when you used to. It's also been three weeks since I've had a class, too, so that doesn't help. So anyway, now we do have the 2 times 6 is 12. And then we add left to right. 5 plus 12 is 17, plus 3 is 12. So again, it's left to right, but you may have things, you know, in, inside, once you get inside an enclosing symbol, your order of operations still applies. So you're still looking for other enclosing symbols. So the other term you can multiplication once you... If there's a number there with no symbol. If it's like this, it might be like that. Well, then that's just going to be 7 plus 1, because there's already a symbol there. Right. So there's yeah. no symbol. There's no symbol there. There's just a number in front of it. Then you have to put multiplication in. Looking at this one, to make this problem work, we have to define what does this line across here mean? Okay, most people say division. It does mean divide. It's called a fraction bar, and it actually means two things. One of them is divide, but it's also an enclosing symbol. It is separating part of the problem from the rest. It is telling us that we have to do everything on top first, then we have to do everything on bottom, then we have to divide. So on top, the first thing that would happen is parentheses and closing symbols. 9 minus 7 is 2. Perfect. And then Adam, 8 plus 2 is 10. So we've reduced everything on top to a single number. Now we've got to do everything on bottom. What's first down there? 3 squared, which is 9. And then 18 divided, perfect. 18 divided by 9 is 2. Now we've reduced both the top and bottom to a single number. All we have to do is divide. 10 divided by 2 is 5. Perfect. Any questions? That's a lot, yeah, I know. Okay, well, we didn't quite get through all the new material today, so if you get the stuff on the homework that doesn't look familiar, well, it's because we probably didn't quite get to it. But homework one is out there for you to look at. Try to have as much of that done as you can by class tomorrow. Um, there will be time at the beginning of class. If you have questions, I will answer those for you. I was just going to pull this up and see exactly what it is we missed so I can give you an idea of what won't be on there. I think that was more than enough for the first day anyway, right? Actually, it looks like we covered pretty much everything that's on there, so there shouldn't be anything that comes up that you should be really lost on. We're not in too bad a shape. Okay, well... We're three minutes early. Normally, I would try to give you more like 15 or 20 minutes to start the homework at the end of class, but I got a lot, little long-winged at the beginning today. Sorry about that. Um, I will be here till at least noon, um, usually a little bit later. So if you have any questions, if the network, I think, might cut out on us, at, I don't know if it's going to cut out at 11.40 or 11.50, but I'm going to time it today, and I'm going to probably tell them to adjust it so it doesn't cut out till noon. So you guys have time to stick around and ask questions after class.